going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here and welcome back to JTAG and RJH Tutorials Episode 2. So in this tutorial we're going to be looking at installing Dash Launch, which is a very very important application to have installed on your JTAG or RGH. The next one to install, we installed XX Menu first of all, which was important so that we had access to the file system. Now we are installing Dash Launch, which basically it basically gives us our kind of master settings for the console, sets it up for modding basically. You have it has plugins a plugin option so that you can add plugins like mod menu plugins and um, you know mo Xbox mod tool plugins um, also stuff like um, you know the ability to change paths so that uh, you can automatically launch a specific game or dashboard when the console boots up um, ping patch to allow you to use link and live block to prevent you from accidentally connecting to live and getting banned I will be showing you guys how to connect to live safely and get the console online so that you can mod online uh, later on in the series as well. Uh, so anyway, Dash Launch, very important one to have installed next. So what you want to do is, again, plug your USB stick in. So make sure you have a USB stick, plug it in to your console. What you want to do, or plug it into your computer and make sure that it is formatted as FAT32. So. In order to format it in FAT32, you can do it within Windows if it's a small USB stick, I think 32 gigs or less. Um, you can just right click and go to Format and then FAT32 should show up in this drop down list and you just select FAT32 and click the button to start. Um, you can just right click and go to Properties to check to see if it's already on FAT32. Now if your USB stick is too big, like mine is, and it doesn't have the FAT32 option, then all you have to do is plug it into your, your Xbox 360 and format it on the Xbox 360 like we did in um, episode 1. And that will basically format it in FAT32 uh, so that it is ready to basically be compatible with your console. So once you've done that, once you've confirmed it's FAT32, you can basically delete these files in here if you still have them in there from episode 1. We don't need that anymore now that we have that, uh, now that we have XTX menu on the hard drive. So what you want to do is download Dash Launch for version 3.18. I'll put the latest version in the description. So what you want to do is just download it and open it up. And then inside the USB stick, you want to create a new folder called Dash Launch. I'm going to call it V3.18. You can just call it Dash Launch if you want. And then go into that folder and extract all of these files into that folder. And that's that. So next, all we've got to do is unplug the USB stick, plug it into the console, and start XTX menu on the console. Okay, so now we're on the console. I'm going to head to my games, XTX menu, and launch it. And press right bumper. That should take you to the USB. If it doesn't, then press X and head to USB 0. Uh, then you have Dash Launch V3.18. You want to press Y and press A to copy it. Then press X, head to your hard drive, and then create a new folder on your hard drive. So we go, uh, you press Y and you head down to create. And then we type in, so I'm going to call this folder, uh, whoops, I'm going to call this folder Homebrew. And that is because homebrew is basically, uh, basically stands. F so homebrew is basically, um, you know, for applications that have been made by the modding community, not official, you know, Xbox applications. So we're going to create a folder called homebrew. We're going to go into that folder, and then we're going to press Y and press A to paste our dash launch that we copied into that folder. So now we have dash launch in our hard drive inside the homebrew folder. You want to go into that folder, go into the installer folder and press A on default.xex and that will launch uh, Dash Launch. Okay, so once you're in Dash Launch, you don't really need to change any of these settings. You can enable the FTP server if it's not already enabled. Um, th these are your plugins. There shouldn't be anything in there by default. Um, or there might be some example plugins, but they're, they're not actually plugins that are installed. So um, yeah, so the, inside the plugins list, you can add mod menus and, and XRPC tools, which I'll be showing you how to do uh, later on in the series. Then you've got network. You want to make sure ping patch is enabled. Should be by default. Live block needs to be enabled. It should also be by default, but you just want to double check. And yeah, 
nothing really in behavior that needs to be changed or paths right now either. Okay, so once you've done that, all you want to do is press right bumper and you want to head, see flash will probably be selected by default. It will have the little green uh, icon next to it. You want to change it to your hard drive. You don't want the settings to be saved to the flash. You want the settings to be saved to the hard drive um, so that they can be easily edited. Uh, whenever you want. So in order to do that, you want to press X on HDD, which is your internal hard drive. And if it doesn't go green, then you want to press A on it. So you want to press A on it first, and that selects the hard drive, and then press X to save the settings to the hard drive. And then what you want at the end of it, it should be the you should have the little green icon over the hard drive, which means that the settings are being saved and loaded from the hard drive instead of the flash. So now that that's done, another cool thing you can do in Dash Launch is adjust your fan speed, which I recommend doing if, especially if you have uh, one of the older consoles that is prone to overheating. Um, you can check your motherboard at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can see mine says board Trinity flash Trinity. And then it also gives me my glitch type and the kernel version. So mine's a Trinity. If you have a Trinity or a Corona or a Jasper, you don't really need to worry about, you know, the console overheating very much. But if you have like a Falcon or a Xenon especially, or a Zypher, then yeah, you probably are gonna want to, um, you are gonna want to increase the fan speed. So what you wanna do is just press right bumper again, go down to system info, and then just go down until you get uh, that little green box showing up where CPU fan override is, and then you can just move the left stick um, forward to increase the fan speed so you can hear that it's on full power and then of course you can put it down to reduce the fan speed so I tend to go about 60 or 65 percent fan speed seems to be enough for me you want to get it so that it's not too loud and not too annoying um, but is you know fast enough to keep the CPU and GPU cool okay so once you've selected your fan speed you want to just press A to save config and now you can just basically press B and keep pressing B until you back out to the dashboard. And now that's you got um, Dash Launch installed. So yeah, that's basically it. You have Dash Launch installed now. That's all you need uh, for that. So that is episode two complete. In episode three, we'll look at installing a custom dashboard um, to, give, to give you more functionality. And then episode four, we'll install games. And then we'll probably do maybe DLC and stuff uh, after that. And then we'll get the console online uh, and install Xbox 360 Neighborhood and some other stuff. So anyway, that's basically it for this video. That's episode two, installing Dash Launch. If you enjoyed this video or found the information useful, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.